Hey folks, welcome to the Impact Lounge. This is BQ. If you are one of my loyal subscribers, once again, I appreciate you very much. I cannot say thank you enough. Thank you for checking out the content, whether it's uh, rumors, news, discussion questions, reviews, whatever it is. Really appreciate you. If it's your first time, you're clicking here for the first time, you're a big Impact Wrestling fan, this is the place to be. Would love your subscription. Again, do I, I do reviews, news, um, discussion questions, talk about rumors, interviews. Um, I've got Congo Kong coming up next, followed by uh, Rohi Raju, Braxton Sutter. And then um, for those of you who love the knockouts, I got something real, real special for you coming up. But I'm not going to disclose that information quite yet. But you guys will not regret it. Yeah, it's really, really, really big. So wanted to talk this uh, one night only show. Now, one night only are going to be a little more difficult to review. So I guess when I talk about them, I'm going to I'm going to be pretty quick with everything. I'm not going to break it down like an episode of impact. But I also want to know in the comments what matches you guys liked and what's what what stars you guys liked, which indie stars that you're seeing for the first time who is that person you reached out to and you followed on twitter or followed on instagram because you're just like wow i'm a new fan these partnerships are so cool because you know i've stated before i'm not a fan i like indie wrestling but i'm not a fan of like the flippy indie wrestling you know i'm a fan of you know a company like bcw just just hungry stars trying to get a character over or a, a gimmick over just you know their their move set over or whatever you know but just just hungry wrestlers i'm not into a bunch of you know near falls and all this crap you know wrestling into the crowd that is something when i'm a fan at an impact i mean I, i'm sorry at an indie show i don't like when i have to get up out of my seat because I'll, I'll oftentimes i have my kids with me so i'm not really a fan of that crazy stuff but the companies that Impact seems to be partnering with the One Night Onlys and the Twitch, like, I think that's perfect. And and um, I think we see a lot of stars that we could really potentially see on Impact one day, which is really cool. So I'm going to run down, you know, quick thoughts about the One Night Only March Breakdown show. And again, in the comments, folks, um, let, let me know your thoughts. Like, let me know what wrestlers you really liked or if there was someone you just didn't like or your overall thoughts on a show. Like, please let me know. I want it to be a little more um, interactive than an impact review. So uh, please let me know. Um, give the video a thumbs up. I'd love to get 50 thumbs up on the thumbs up, ugh, thumbs up on this video. So uh, please let me get those 50 thumbs up and let's talk one night only here. So the first match of the evening was... Idris Abraham versus El Reverso. So I think this was a little different overall, this card compared to the Twitch show, because with the Twitch last last chancery, I want to say every match featured an impact star. And this was not necessarily a case for this show. I want to say the crowd is is from beginning to end was the hottest crowd, or I should say the most engaged crowd that we've seen on an impact broadcast in a long time. I'm talking about impact shows. I'm talking about pay-per-views, whatever it is. And there's been, you know, like bound for glory started off real hot. And then by the end, people got really tired. Like the people in the front row here were going crazy the entire night. You know, it, it, it's, it was crazy. I cannot wait for, for the episodes of impact to tape here. Freaking amazing. So Idris Abraham versus El Reverso. Idris Abraham was part of Impact for a little while. And I kind of like this character. And, you know, they threw him in the X Division. But I, I don't think we ever saw some, you know, anything to write home about from him. Um, I, I kind of like the dude. But I, I don't think we have ever seen what he's truly capable of. Now, there was a one night only tag team match of him and Hakeem Zayn. Um, it was against Garza Jr. and uh, Laredo Kid, and this match was so good. and And really, Abraham was Abraham was great. But other than that, I don't think we've really seen what he can do. And I think this was just kind of another example. It was a match that you know they kind of promoted as an X Division match, but it was something that was just kind of there. And it seemed like a lot of people liked El Reverso. I thought it was okay. 
Um, the match was a little disjointed, and I thought the the finish was flat, not because it wasn't impressive, but I cannot remember the last time someone won a match with a moonsault. You know, like usually that's usually that's like a high spot that someone kicks out of, especially if you're watching like Ring of Honor or something. So he does the missile drop kick and then the um, the moonsault, and I thought the whole sequence was just kind of slow. And uh, El Reverso wins. So some people were saying he's like X Division material. I don't know if I necessarily see that, but it was an okay, solid match. After this, Madison Rain took on Giselle Shaw, and this was a this was a pretty decent match. Um, Giselle Shaw is very new, very green, and she looked pretty damn good out there. Real tall girl. They were trying to bill her as you know six foot tall or something, which I think is kind of silly. She's definitely a taller girl, but she was doing. She was pretty impressive out there. I mean, we see knockouts that come in sometimes with more experience than her and and do a lot less. So Giselle Shaw, I think that's someone they should they should take a look at. Madison Rain is kind of doing the the Cody thing, you know, um, jumping around. And she did an interview with Alicia, who again did the backstage segments here, and she's freaking amazing. She's gorgeous, like does a phenomenal job. But she did an interview with Madison Rain, and it seems like Madison Rain still wants another knockouts title reign. It's just that she was saying she's just, you know, been with the company for so long, wrestling the same people and just doing the same thing. Like she really wanted to get out there more. So she's, she, you know, she's wrestling wherever she can wrestle. So it sounds like she's going to be a part timer for Impact. So it was really nice to see her. Um, I think the right girl won. You know, Madison is is the veteran here, and uh, she gets the win, and. You know, Josh Matthews called the move a cross rain because <laughs> it's like the crossroads. I don't remember her ever calling it that. She usually had some very creative names like the rain check or raindrop for her move. So cross rain, I feel like he just pulled that out of his ass. The commentary was pretty, it was okay for this show. I, I do actually like Scott Demore. It's hard for me to listen to Josh Matthews take this baby face role when like sometimes on impact, he, he just flip flops a lot when he's doing the commentary role and it's kind of hard, but Demore does pretty good by the end of this show. You could tell that in the commentary team was very tired. Like they, in the main event, they were just phoning it in. Um, and maybe they were tired. I think this was, no, it was the first night of the first night. Cause uh, yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was the first night of the two um, tapings that they did, but it sounded like they were really tired at the end of it. But this um, Giselle Shaw, she did one where she did like kind of a spinning corkscrew, corkscrew coming in the ring. That was that was really impressive. I didn't see that coming, but um, definitely a girl they should look into. The Desi Hit Squad had a tag team match with Sheldon Jean and Stone Rockwell. I think Stone Rockwell is one of the best characters I've seen on one of these shows or just in general, like the whole, you know, action adventure and it's adventure time and stuff like these big pearly white teeth. When, when they were cutting the promo before and he came out, I thought he was like a manager or something. I didn't think this dude was a wrestler. I think he made a lot of fans, a lot of new fans this night. And and that's, what's so cool about these one night only's Sheldon Jean. Um, I guess he, he has done some work with Noah. I thought he was pretty impressive. Um, you know, wasn't necessarily like a standout to me. Like, I don't think he was doing, he was doing some good stuff, impressive stuff. I don't know if it was necessarily, you know, a standout compared to any other indie, indie show you might watch. But I think also it was just him and Stone Rockwell were a weird pairing. And I think Stone Rockwell was such a cool character that it made, you know, Sheldon Jean seem a little bit bland, if that makes sense. But the Hit Squad, this is the second time we've seen them. They're a four man team. And it looks like um, Raju and Singh are going to be the main guys. For all we know, I, I you know I don't really know. I know that Raju Hakeem Zayn, you know he's he's really one of my favorites, and I think he can also do a lot more than we're necessarily seeing. But I think with the Desi Hit Squad, they're still. I think they're kind of using these shows to feel out what they're going to be about, what the, what they're going to do. I think it's good to have them. Uh, featured on these events so the impact fans can get you know familiar with them I have a feeling this is actually going to be a pretty cool stable as long as they get away from um, 
being too stereotypical, which I don't think is the direction they're going to go. Because if you hear them cut promos, they do a really good job. Um, Akeem Zane's a really good promo. And I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what these guys can do. And I'm gonna, I look forward to um, speaking to um, Raju on the podcast here pretty soon. And I know he's excited for the Desi Hit Squad and, and really hopes that they, you know, treat him right um, and hopefully not become some kind of jobber team or something like that. Like, I think they can be really popular in India and I think they can be a really good heel team. But the, the, the um, match in general was, was okay. And most of these matches were just okay. You know, that it's house show quality stuff. And they're not um, going to go balls to the wall. But I thought it was pretty pretty cool. Um, the Desi Hit Squad gets the win. I think they've won both times we've seen them so far. So um, I kind of like the whole running knee sky, sky, high, hum, sky high combo they did to win the match. But pretty decent. I look forward to more from the Desi Hit Squad. And hope we can see some more. Hopefully we can see some more Stone Rockwell. A1 and Alley versus Braxton Sutter and Casey Spinelli. So last time on Last Chancery, Braxton and Alley teamed together, which didn't really line up with. Actually, I could be wrong on that one. I think they teamed up for uh, Brace for Impact. Sorry. So I, I believe they were. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't together for the other one. So Braxton Sutter comes out and cuts a heel promo, which I actually thought was really good. I actually really liked it. So he comes out, and it's crazy because this is his real-life wife. So on Last Chancery, he said, I kicked Allie's ugly ass to the curb. And this time he was like, there's only you know, there's only two things I hate more than something. He's like, Allie and this Ottawa, not Ottawa, but uh, this crowd, wherever the hell they were, Windsor, Windsor crowd. So he did something kind of like heelish. He said, Allie's like a cute little bunny, but it's more like a duckbill platypus. So, of course, he's referring to a very unflattering animal. So it's weird that he like takes these shots at his w- real life wife. I mean, that's freaking crazy. But the the heel promo is just kind of standard and he starts cutting this or starts this like ridiculous laugh after the duckbill platypus thing. <laughs> no, but seriously, Windsor, you suck. And that's what like really cracked me up and really popped me at home watching the way it was just so natural. Uh, uh, but seriously, Windsor, you suck. So I think I think Sutter as a heel is going to be really fun. The match was a little slow for my taste. And, you know, I'm a major Sutter and Alley fan. And um, A1, I forgot what his name was before with Team Canada. But he was pretty impressive. And I'm always really excited to see Casey Spinelli in action. Um, Sutter kind of cut a promo about being Impact's resident, resident heartbreaker or something. I think can really work for him. And he said, you know, I got a new girl now. And it was Casey. And she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. So it almost like, it's almost like he has this role where he thinks every woman wants him, but no one really does. So I think that actually is going to be a really cool character if that's where they're going with it. But the match overall was okay. Um, just a little slow for my taste. And A1 and Allie win. So Braxton Sutter, his thing is that he always loses now. Which I don't really like them going that direction, but... You know, he lost it last chance or he lost the brace for impact and he loses here again. So I don't really I don't really know where they're going with that <laughs> other than than I think they're they're making that his thing where he just loses and gets pissed off. Matt Seidel versus PD Williams versus Trevor Lee happened for the X Division Championship. Um this happened before <laughs> Matt Seidel won the uh, title on TV as far as I can remember um no actually no it, it was it was after he actually physically won it but it was um i think it was before he won it on tv i think don't don't quote me on that so this was a pretty solid x division match what i the, the only thing i want to say about this because this is nothing we haven't seen on impact before they need to get away from the finish that's the canadian destroyer and then pushing him out of out of the ring and stealing the victory i like to see them get away from that I really would. Um, this was probably the best match on the show. But again, it was nothing we haven't really seen on Impact because these are all guys we see on Impact. But I, I like to see him get away from that from that finish. So Eli Drake versus Cody Diener is next. Eli Drake cuts a promo for about 15 minutes. <laughs> this was long. But what a tremendous job he did with it. It was really good. 
Um, it was it was standard Eli Drake. You know what I mean? He wasn't bringing a whole lot new to the table. I think he called someone in the front row uh, five pounds of short change or five five feet of short change, something like that. But for the most part, it was the standard Eli Drake stuff. But I was really into it, and it was really funny. And Cody Diener comes out, and there's just a lot of promo here. I mean, there must have been half an hour, close to half an hour of promo work between the two. So it was very one-night-only-ish because if you watch the old one-night-onlys, lots of promos. Not good ones necessarily either, but lots of promos. This match was was cool for the sake that the crowd really liked Cody Diener. And there's people who really liked Eli Drake as well. And there was a point where they were cheering... Uh, for Eli Drake louder than Cody Diener and um, overall solid Cody um, Cody Diener does not get the victory Eli Drake wins with the gravy train and um, you know not a very climatic climactic finish but solid just like everything else here was you know I'm not I'm not I'm not writing home um, you know it's my parents about any of these matches but but solid stuff Jake Atlas and Phil's Atlas I mean sorry Jake something one of my favorites on the indies he was cousin Jake um, with Cody Diener on the Last Chance Show. So Jake something and Phil Atlas versus Aiden Prince and Brent Banks. So the thing with this match, you know, the, and these were all local guys for them. So that's it's good for the crowd. And I know we weren't really, like really up on the storyline, but I, yeah. we you got Phil Atlas who's a champion, and then I think Brent Banks was the other champion. Um, yeah, Brent Banks and Phil Atlas, they're both champions. So these two split up. Atlas turns on them. They're both champions. They both get to pick a partner. And then the winner, um, the winning team becomes the new champions. I actually thought that was kind of a cool storyline. I can't think of a time in, in pro wrestling where any company has done anything like that. So if, I mean, let me know in the comments if you think that's something that's happened before. But I want to say it hasn't. I think that's actually a pretty good storyline to bring to a big product. But Jake Something and Phil Atlas win, and good stuff because, again, I'm a big Jake Something fan. Um, I do got my Jake Something t-shirt on at home. This match was really cool. Moose versus uh, Joe During, and Joe During is uh, the a the AGPW, AJPW Triple Grant Crown Champion. So they build him as a pretty big deal. This dude was huge. I mean, he looked like he was a lot older. This dude was a beast. He was he was bigger than Moose. This was probably my favorite match. It probably wasn't the best one, but this was kind of my favorite match because we don't we rarely see Moose wrestle someone that big. And this guy, he was impressive. I don't know if I liked Moose losing, but you know, um they're trying to, you know, again, make this guy a big deal. They're trying to legitimate, legitimate size his championship that he won. And I like the back and forth. And I, I like the finish a lot, though. The way he, you know, hits him with the title. Moose kicks out. And at first I was like, okay, dude, this match is going a little bit long now. I mean, this was almost a 13-minute match. I was like, this is going a little bit long. Moose, Moose kicks out. But then... He does the lariat and Moose Moose just flips like a freaking cruiserweight. And the match was over. So I don't think it's good to see Moose losing these, but the way it happened, I mean, this guy looked he looked really good. I I have to wonder, you know, could he work on Impact Television, this kind of character? Main event was Austin Aries and Alberto El Patron versus Congo Kong and RJ City. I was reading a review on 411 Mania, and they said it perfect when they said this match was all about Austin Aries and Alberto El Patron playing grab ass. They must have wasted the first 10 minutes on this shit. And this is not a feud that the Impact fans are necessarily super invested into. And they're acting like it is. I mean, it's, it's probably a better... I think it's better than the Eli Drake-Johnny Impact feud, you know what I mean? But... They, they were really playing some serious slap ass for a while and, you know, playing up to the crowd. Alberto Obatron is supposed to be a heel. This guy comes out through the crowd, slapping five, and he even plays up to the crowd during the match, you know, with the CCC and getting him fired up. I don't care for that from a heel. I remember watching the very last Ring of Honor show I've ever watched. Donovan Dijak, who is really impressive, was doing that as a heel getting the crowd involved and shit. 
And that was, there was many reasons when I watched that show that I was like, this is the last time I'm watching Ring of Honor. I don't like that. And Alberto Opatron does it a lot. He does a lot of baby face things with the crowd. I like that he can get a reaction out of the crowd. I've said that a hundred times, but not in a baby face manner. So Austin Aries, Alberto El Patron took on Congo Khan, RJ City. RJ City, I want to see this guy every week on Impact. His promos are great. They're hilarious. He really meshed well with uh, Jimmy Jacobs and, you know, try to give Congo Kong a high five before the match and everything. Like, this guy's hilarious. And I guess he has a web show where he drinks coffee and interviews wrestlers in his underwear or whatever. I kind of got to check it out. I don't know if I care for the underwear part a whole lot, but I got to check it out. This dude is a um, really entertaining talent. Congo Kong, this is the second or third time he's been in the main event. In these shows. So they're definitely trying him out on these house shows. He's the Border City Wrestling Champion, which was cool that he came out with the belt. I thought that was really awesome. Congo Kong lost the last time. He was in a triple threat match with Seidel and Aries. And th- those guys are both champions. So naturally, Congo Kong had to take the pin. I'm not really big on Congo Kong taking pins, but he did and he lost. He comes out here. He actually gets the victory and pins Austin Aries. No, I think they try to play it off like Alberto El Patron caused it, but he just like pulled his leg and, you know, he did the nut shot on, in the corner. The corner avalanche that Congo Kong did, though, looked like it really hurt. And then he hits him with a Samoan driver and gets the win. So I wasn't expecting that kind of finish, um, especially with the world champion getting pinned, but not bad. Um the match was okay. It was just very slow. It, it Again, another 13-minute match. It took a long time for us to get to the end. I had a hard time not messing around with my phone and texting because it was just so much wasted time in this match with Aries and El Patron that RJ City and Kong were just like side acts. And I didn't really I didn't really like that. But um oh, and after the match, he draped one of the titles over Austin Aries and kicked him in the head. El Patron did, so that was kind of cool. But overall, you know, solid show. This is better than the one night only's we've been getting before, a lot better, especially with the engaged crowd. Really loving what they're doing with one night only and Twitch. Um, you know, they're, they're house shows, so we can't expect, you know, Bound for Glory stuff, but it's cool. It gives us a, a, us a chance to see wrestlers we haven't seen before. So it's it's really good stuff, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys thought of the show. And who were some of the stars that you really enjoyed? Who are some of the stars you didn't enjoy? What are some of the what are some of the things standing out to you that you like and don't like? Thanks for listening, folks. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.